You guys already know that North Naperville Autos is the number one dealer of used cars in the Chicagoland area, but they are now offering shipping on all of their online purchases. That's right, if you buy a car at North Naperville Autos online, it'll be shipped directly to your front door. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2006 Chevy Impala 3LT. Up front is a 3.9 liter V6 and down below is a 4 speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Impala for a couple of reasons, but mainly this era of GM is the era that I grew up around and people seem to have a lot of nostalgia for this sort of mid 2000s peak economy GM cars. And so I'm excited to share the Impala from the mid 2000s with you guys. But before we get on to anything else, I do have a website, zachpradle.com, if you'd like to check out blog posts, buy merchandise, or submit your own vehicle for review. You can do that right there, or you can email me at pradlereviews at gmail.com to submit your vehicle that way. But let's get back to that 3.9 liter V6. That is quite the displacement on that V6 edging on V8 territory for sure, making 242 horsepower to the front wheels, which definitely is nothing to thumb your nose at. I quite like the power and you're not going to feel underpowered here in the Impala. This is also the same 3.9 liter that was used in the very top trim of the Pontiac G6. I used to own one of those. Unfortunately, I had the four cylinder, but you could also get a 3.9 liter in one of those. And this motor is shared with a lot of other GM products because this is the GM W platform, which is also shared with the Buick LaCrosse and plenty of other vehicles. Like I said, paired to it is a four speed automatic transmission. It's doing the job even though it's 10 degrees here today. I don't really have any issues with it. It's a very typical GM transmission. Last but not least, the Impala is front wheel drive, which is interesting because Impalas in my mind were always rear wheel drive, sort of muscle sedans, and this isn't that. So I always forget that these are front wheel drive and they did still make an SS variant of this generation Impala, but it too was front wheel drive with a 5.3 liter V8. One of these days I'll get my hands on one of those. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have some pretty plain gauges. On the left is my tachometer, in the center is my speedometer, and on the right, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. I do get a little digital readout, and this gives me a ton of information. GM is always really good about doing this. The Silverado, the Corvette, pretty much anything from this era, they give you plenty of info, which is just fantastic. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control settings, and on the right, I have my skip track, volume, and things of that nature. The steering wheel itself is very plain and very basic, but this is to be expected out of GM from this era. This is right before 2008 when GM went bankrupt, and so they still weren't in the best financial standings at the time. One super annoying thing I've realized is the emergency brake lever to actually turn it on is so high up that every time I get in the car, I accidentally click it a time or two, which is fine, you just reset it like that, but it's kind of annoying. Every time I got into this car, I kicked this little thing and put on the parking brake. To the left of me, I do have my headlight switches, as well as my trunk release and gauge dimmer switches. And on the door, I have my lock and unlock, power windows, and power mirrors. Moving into the center, I do have two climate control vents, which look kind of weird because there's no adjuster like in the middle of them. If you know what I mean, there's normally like a little piece of plastic in the very center for adjusting it, but those are actually done in between them or at the bottom, which is kind of interesting. They're a lot cleaner. And to the far right of that, I actually have the Impala badge, which is almost unrecognizable these days. I haven't seen this badge in a very, very long time. Then moving down the center stack, we do have a very typical GM radio. I think every single vehicle from Chevy of this year had this exact same radio, so par for the course. And then I have my very basic climate controls. I do get dual zone, which is nice. It's sort of odd how you adjust it, but you get dual zone nevertheless. And of course, fan speed, where to send it, things like that. Moving down to the center console, I do have a 12 
deadbolt outlet and a little cubby for putting you know whatever you want and then we have the shifter itself the shifter has a nice feeling to it actually putting it into gear has a nice satisfying clunk that i really like however it's not labeled I'm not sure if this is like an aftermarket thing or if the label's rubbed off, but the only way to tell what gear you're in is either by feel, if you've driven the car for a long period of time, or up on the dash, it does have the PRN D321 on it. So you'll have to keep an eye on that. I wish that they labeled it, but not the end of the world. Then down below the shifter, I do technically sort of have cup holders. So we'll do a big freaking bottle test. And of course it fails. I didn't expect it to pass but these are just so funky. They just don't seem functional for any size bottle. Then we do have a center armrest with some storage in it. Nothing too crazy to see there. And then we have to talk about the seats. I was really expecting leather out of a 3LT. The 3LT is an interior package. 3LT meaning it has all of the bells and whistles and features. And so I expected it to have leather but alas it does not however the seats are nice and comfortable i am pleasantly enjoying them especially on this cold day i don't really have any complaints but speaking of seats we do have back seats so let's go do a back seat review all right so we're in the back of the 2006 chevy impala and chevy gm you know i keep mentioning gm as a whole but i've driven a lot of gms from this era they are pretty good at having good back seats sitting like a normal human my head isn't hitting the ceiling, my knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me. I have plenty of space back here. Again, this is across GM's lineup though. I was actually fairly impressed with the 2009 Chevy Aveo back seat that I sat in. My Pontiac G6 had a great back seat. And so that's pretty much par for the course when it comes to GM sedans. And something that I actually miss here in the current market. But speaking of space, let's go take a quick look at the trunk and talk about the cargo space. Another thing that GM does really well is fantastic cargo space. This has a very nice sizable trunk. It is freezing today, so I won't show you too much of it, but you can fit pretty much anything you want back here, and that is awesome. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I think the looks of this Impala are super, super bland. Very, very blobby, very unsophisticated, which is par for the course for GM of this era. Let's take a look at the Chevy Aveo from 2009. Let's take a look at my Pontiac G6. They're not very aggressive. Sure, they have some lines here and there, but across the board, it's a rather blobby, circular look rather than the newer, harsh and angular. But overall, I think it looks presentable. I think it's very easily identifiable as an Impala. And again, something I've grown up around. These were also used for police vehicles. These were also used as detectives cars, city cars, things like that. There were also fleet Malibus. However, this was a civilian model, but still, I'm very used to seeing them. And so what is my final consensus here on the Malibu? Well, I like the power of it. The 3.9 liter making 242 horsepower isn't anything small. It is a considerable amount of power for this kind of car. I'm also fairly comfortable in here. I like the seats. I think the materials, the fake wood in here, yeah, it's a little eh. But for 108,000 miles, it's held up pretty well. But at the end of the day, I'm just left desiring a little bit more. I thought that these were more luxurious than they actually are. I, for some reason, I thought the Impala was a luxury car. It's not. I think at the end of the day, I hate to say it, but these are rather forgettable. Now, the Impala SS, that's something to behold. And if you have one, I would love to review one. Please let me know. But if you're looking for something unique and different and plush and fun, I don't know if the Impala is what you're looking for. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their 06 Impala. I'm so glad I was finally able to get behind the wheel of one of these. North Naperville Autos is absolutely awesome. This is one of their vehicles for sale right now. They also offer financing and they are Carfax certified so you can get the whole vehicle's history whenever you shop with them. If you're looking for a new car in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos should be your first stop. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.